This dream to do this swim, I've been dreaming about this for many, many, many years. Legendary British endurance swimmer Lewis Pugh swimming the length of the Hudson River, all 315 miles. And to swim down the river and then occasionally go into backstroke and watch a bald eagle just flying above me and just following me down the river, such a highlight. Cue the I Love New York music, right? Because that's a tourist dream, right? Or the Jay-Z, Empire <laughs> State of Mind. Empire State of Mind, <laughs> all that, in. right, right, right. The fact that he swam in our river, the Hudson River, 300, I just, I'm blown away by that. And we're still blown away. Yeah. And so, we brought him here. <laughs> Louis Pugh <laughs> in the studio talking to us about this amazing feat. Wow, we're still so just enamored with all that you just did. 315 miles. Thank you. Thank you. Incredible. Get to the physical I mean, part yes, first. Yes, please. Yeah. We'll please talk do. about why, but, but that's not easy, and you train a lot for this. It's a long river. 300. <laughs> <laughs> the Adirondack, you, you started in the Adirondacks, yes. and then you ended in Battery Park. I know, 315 <laughs> miles. It's a long way. What's the hardest part? What section? <sighs> It was, every single little bit was hard. Yeah. Take yeah. me through that moment. So you describe this part where you're doing the backstroke. Yes. And this bald eagle comes yeah. above you to like escort you in. Very American patriotic <laughs> there we welcoming go. of you know our English friend. Yeah. What was that moment like and where did it happen? What's going through your mind at that point? It happened a few times and it also happened with ospreys. Okay. So literally them mm. sort of following me down the river. I'll tell you why I found this so amazing. It's because bald eagles were virtually extinct yes. in the yes. Hudson yes. River. Yep. Yep. yep, for a long time. Long and so time. when you can just roll over at any point in the Hudson River and see one, that yeah. means we've got a healthy river basin, we've got a healthy river, we have a healthy ecosystem. People have worked so hard. New Yorkers, in the 1970s, New Yorkers said, enough is enough. We've got to clean up this river, and they've done a great job. So this isn't the first time you've done one of these incredible swims. I believe it was back in 2007 you swam the Arctic, yes. which had to have been mind-blowing as well. How do the two compare? Oh, so this was a swim across the North Pole. Yeah. So yeah. I, I want you to imagine arriving at the North Pole, and there's mm. ice everywhere and a big hole in the middle and the water is 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Okay, so the Hudson is on the other end of the spectrum, okay? <laughs> uh, and there's nobody up in the Arctic, obviously, at the North Pole. And what was so wonderful was all the people along the side of the river encouraging me. You were telling me Marist College, they were coming down, the road team was down there, even the, the president of the, the school was down there <laughs> swimming with you. And this blew me away because the idea that a, the head of a university and all the students would be swimming in a river, I mean, 50 years ago, that would have been absolutely impossible. It would have been a joke, yes. right? It would have been like no one's going to get in the Hudson River. And in my country, the idea that a vice chancellor would get in a river, it's impossible at the moment because our rivers are so polluted there. This can be a blueprint for rivers all over the world. Talk about that. Talk yeah. more about what really motivates you because this is tough on the body to do this kind of endurance swimming. It's tough. Um, let's talk about your cause. Yeah, I mean, we need to have clean, fresh water. And you know, when I swam towards the Statue of Liberty and you see the Statue of Liberty there, mm -hmm. and all I could think was that every single thing which we hold dear to ourselves relies on us being able to drink clean water and breathe fresh air and have a habitable planet. Everything else is secondary. Yeah. What's, so what's next? Oh, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down for a minute, but yeah. then after that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I serve as the UN patron of the oceans Monday morning into the United Nations to meet all the environment ministers who are coming there to talk to them about their rivers around the world. Yeah, UN General Assembly next week. And then yeah. finally, just wrapping up with you, just an incredible feat, no doubt. But what do you hope? What's your hope? We talked about the progress we've made with the Hudson River. What will you consider a success at the end of your journey here? New Yorkers must still be vigilant. We must okay. still look at this river. There's so much work has been done. More work needs to be done uh, here in this river to really make it properly clean. But I hope that people around the world look at this and they say, our rivers can also be saved. Look what the New Yorkers did. Love Great that. Message. Such a nice Thank thing. Your voice is so zen. Yeah. <laughs> I can listen to your voice all day. <laughs> you need that when you're in the, the river for that long, your internal voice. Absolutely. Yeah. Voices in my head don't sound like that. that maybe that's why I'm a little low. For just the spending place. time with us and, and explaining to people. Thank you so much for Thank doing you. it. Thank you for what you're doing, Thank the message you. that you're sending out. And we appreciate you taking the time yep. to be with us today.